let's spend some time talking about specific groups on the periodic table. Groups are also known as families. Just like families have individuals with shared characteristics, a family on the periodic table consists of elements that have similar physical and chemical characteristics. We'll start with group one, the alkali metals. The alkali metals all have one valence electron. Valence electrons are electrons in the outermost orbital, the outermost energy level. They're the only ones we care about in chemistry. All the elements in group one have one valence electron. That's what makes them extremely reactive. You cannot find an alkali metal in its elemental form out in nature. It's always reacted with something else. The, if you can isolate it, these metals are soft. You can cut them with a knife. They're shiny and they react with water and gas. So a lot of times when it's isolated, you have to store them in oil. The reactivity of these metals increases as you go down the table. Cesium is way more reactive than lithium is. Group two, contains the family known as alkaline earth metals. Alkaline earth metals have two valence electrons. They have two electrons in their outermost energy level. They will also lose these electrons very easily, so they're fairly reactive. They're harder and denser and stronger than alkali metals, but not quite as reactive. You can see magnesium a lot anytime you see a white firework there was magnesium metal in that firework. Okay, it's a component of antacids. Calcium is needed for strong bones. It's also needed by chickens to make strong eggshells. Both elements, magnesium and calcium, are essential to life. We're gonna skip the transition metals. We're gonna go to group three on the periodic table, which has boron at the top, and that's why it's called the boron family. These elements have three valence electrons. So usually they will lose these three valence electrons when they react. If we continue with the trends, they are more dense than group one and group two metals, but not nearly as reactive. Boron is used in a lot of chemistry glassware. That's called Pyrex. Aluminum is the most common metal on earth. It can be extracted from the mineral bauxite. We use it for aluminum cans, the bodies of airplanes. It's very lightweight, very durable metal. The fourth family on the periodic table has carbon at the top, so it's called the carbon family. These elements have four valence electrons. They will either lose or gain four valence electrons depending on what they're bonding with or what they're reacting with. This family is unique. It contains a non-metal at the top and then two metalloids and then at the bottom two metals. The most common element in this family is definitely carbon. That's the organic molecule. All life is based on the element carbon. Silicone is actually the second most abundant element on earth. It makes up uh, computer chips. Sand is made of silicon dioxide. And if you heat up sand, you get glass. Moving on, group five has nitrogen at the top. An old name for it is called the nictogen family. These elements have five valence electrons. They will gain three electrons when they react. This family contains two nonmetals at the top and then two metalloids and at the bottom a metal. Nitrogen makes up 78% of our atmosphere. It's also used in fertilizers. You can find phosphorus in match heads also in fertilizers. Both nitrogen and phosphorus are essential to life. You need nitrogen and phosphorus for DNA and RNA. You need nitrogen for sure for all your proteins, so they are essential elements to life. If we move to group six, an old name for that is called the chalcogen family. Following the trend, all of the elements in this family have six valence electrons in their, their outer orbital around the nucleus. They tend to gain two electrons when they react. This family contains some reactive nonmetals. This family contains some reactive nonmetals. You got oxygen, which is the most abundant element in the Earth's crust because it reacts with things so well. Anything that's rusty, that's iron reacting with oxygen. Anything that burns is a reaction with oxygen. Gunpowder and medicines are the use of sulfur. Life needs both oxygen and sulfur to thrive. Moving on to group seven, these elements are called the halogens. They are the most reactive non-metals. Following the trend, they have seven valence electrons. 
They will gain one electron when they react. The most reactive halogen is actually at the top. Fluorine is the most reactive halogen. They become less reactive as you go down the family. These elements are very reactive with metals. Table salt, sodium chloride is a metal and then a halogen. Potassium iodide, which is actually a component of some table salts, is made of a metal and a halogen. Other uses include uh, treating drinking water and being used for a disinfectant, chlorine in a swimming pool, iodine when you're about to get an injection. Those are all uses of halogens. Group eight is the noble gases. The name noble gases refers to like nobility, noblemen. Noblemen do not interact with common folk. Well, noble gases are extremely unreactive. They don't react or interact with other elements. Hence the name noble gases. These elements have eight valence electrons following that trend as we moved across the table. Even though elements in this family are extremely unreactive, we do have some uses for them. We fill our blimps and balloons with helium. Any red neon sign is actually has neon gas in it. If you're a welder, argon is used as a little envelope around the reacting gases in an arc weld that prevents the oxygen from the atmosphere from reacting with the gases that you are using to do the weld. Okay, the last thing I wanna talk about is the placement of hydrogen on the periodic table. As you can see on this table, they've placed hydrogen above group one, the alkali metals, and also above group seven, the halogens. So is hydrogen an alkali metal or is it a halogen? Well, first of all, hydrogen is not a metal. Hydrogen is a gas. So it seems kind of weird to put it above the alkali metals. Seems to make a little bit more sense to put it above the halogens because a gas would be a non-metal. Well, okay. Hydrogen only has one valence electron, like all the alkali metals. It doesn't have seven valence electrons like the halogens. So maybe it makes more sense to put it above group one as an alkali metal. Remember, alkali metals like to lose that one electron. Well, most of the time, that's what hydrogen wants to do. But sometimes it will gain electrons when reacting. So what do you do? Well, this is what scientists have done. You just need to make sure we understand this. Based on the physical properties, hydrogen should be in group seven with a halogen. However, hydrogen has the chemical properties of a group one metal. When it reacts, it tends to lose an electron. So therefore, you will see hydrogen above group one most of the time. But you need to remember, hydrogen is not an alkali metal. The alkali metals start with lithium. All right, that was a lot of information to take in. So until next time.